Today it's time to react to a new Michelin star chef, Mr. Heinz Beck. He's gonna show us how to make a Michelin star chef carbonara. Can you make carbonara anyway better than a classic way? You can always improve it, so let's see what you can offer us. The ultimate carbonara recipe with Chef Heinz Beck. Are we confident he's gonna do a good job? We are. I'm Heinz Beck from La Pergola restaurant in Rome. Wow, okay, he's in Rome. La Pergola restaurant is a Michelin star chef. How bad can this go? And my restaurant is on the rooftop of the Rome Cavalieri, and the Rome Cavalieri makes part of the world of Astoria brand. Okay, wow, pretty impressive. Wow, it must be awesome. I never had the pleasure to eat at these restaurants. First dish I prepared for you, it's the famous carbonara facotelli. Mm, interesting. This dish, I was thinking, why carbonara spaghetti sometimes is so heavy? Facotelli is heavier than spaghetti. Spaghetti is normally made with durum wheat and water, or can be done fresh uh, with fresh eggs and semolina and flour. But fagotelli is um, it's basically a filled. It's a filled pasta, so it, it's heavier. So, to understand this part. Then I was coming to the conclusion that it's all about the egg. If the egg is too much cooked, then you will need too much time to digest. Okay, that's his point, okay. Well, I guess maybe that's why now they use only the egg yolk, is that why? Um, I still like to use the whole egg, but I do make the carbonara with just the yolks. It just depends, depends how I feel, okay? But you know, one way or the other, the carbonara is a heavy dish. When I eat carbonara, I'm not looking at losing weight. I know I'm having a rich, powerful dish. Well, I was thinking how to make a perfect carbonara. In the end, the solution was putting the egg inside the pasta. Okay, interesting. Right, 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 right. I, I see, I understand this point. So it's like um, when you make the raviolo, uh, the Michelin star raviolo from uh, the 80s. You can watch my video how to make the uh, egg yolk raviolo. It's basically a big raviolo with uh, egg in it. Uh, and it's a great idea. That, that raviolo was also created by a Michelin star chef. It's a fantastic taste experience. It's an explosion of flavors in your mouth. Oh, cool, cool, that's what I like to say. Wow. Honestly, I never watch this guy, but I always say, an explosion of happiness into your mouth. He said it. We have some kind of connection, uh, my friend Heinz Beck. I like what he said. It's all about the experience, so it is very important. But let's see what he does. We have to whip the egg yolks like a sapignon. Okay, whip egg yolks. He's not gonna share the recipe with us, but we're assuming uh, it's one egg yolk every 100 grams of pasta or per person. Capility. Mixing under these egg yolks the grated pecorino chip. It is important to have grated. That's probably why sometimes your carbonara or cashew pepper doesn't work. Grated pecorino. If you actually get the shaved one or it's grated by, it needs to be fine. Grated doesn't mean like grated, like fine, 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 like little tiny balls, okay? You don't want them to be long strings or little strings because I don't think it works as well in my opinion. Yolks, the grated pecorino cheese and the pepper. And then we fold under these <gasps> whipped egg yolks a little bit of whipped cream. <gasps> Come on, man, you're in Rome. You're a Michelin star chef and you're doing this. Per favore, hands back. Why are you doing this? Why? I don't agree. Carbonara, there is no cream in carbonara. Everybody knows. Even the rocks in the Colosseum knows. No cream in carbonara. When you go to the Colosseum, you have little voices telling you, no cream in carbonara. And then you're putting me cream. If you're in Rome, and uh, I don't think your restaurant is still open. And if it is, I don't think you're there making carbonara because you cannot put cream in carbonara. I know it's the feeling. You make the cream with the pecorino. You want to do the mixed food with the eggs. You need the egg yolks. You need the pecorino cheese. I suggest, I give you an idea now, put some guanciale in there to make it more consistent. But you need to create like a dense cream using pecorino and egg yolks. And add some crushed uh, guanciale in there. Mix it together until it's very dense. And then you do it. You want like, to create like a ricotta cream texture that's what you want to do that's my idea i've never done it before i'm gonna try and do this but no the cream i'm sorry no the cream it's a cheating it's cheating you don't do that in a mission star chef you can come up with other ideas with a little bit more volume then we put it for 
half now in the fridge. Okay, the reason why I put it in the fridge is a good idea. So it sets, it's not going to be runny, it becomes more like dense, like more firm. That means that when we make the pasta, we need to do it in a cold environment, okay? If it's too hot, maybe the cream will, will slowly become floppy and we need everything to be cold and straight back in the fridge. It's not easy what it's doing. It's actually fascinating. I'm going to try and make this for you guys. I think you need a cold environment. But we have, we will use to fill our fresh pasta. See how the feeling is? You do not need the cream to do this. You don't need the cream to achieve this result. No way, you can avoid it. If I fill our fresh pasta, and then we will boil it in salted water to give a nice taste around the pasta. So you basically put the carbonara sauce inside the pasta, which is a great idea. I would have used some crushed guanciale. I think it's gonna be a lot nicer when you have that crunch inside. Not big strip, but little, 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 little crushed guanciale. Cooked guanciale, of course. Guanciale is a dried pork chicken marinated. Bravo, you explained it very well, bravissimo. Don't get them in uh, America. You can use fresh pancetta as well. I agree. Look, if you can find guanciale, get pancetta. But honestly, lots of butchers today have guanciale and lots of shops have guanciale. What I didn't like is the way you actually cut the guanciale. It's very thin. It's not my... I don't like it. I know you're a Michelin star chef, but explain to me. Why do you make the guanciale so thin? I want the guanciale to be crispy. I want the guanciale to be powerful. It looks like onions. It looks like too thin. You know, like it's all about the experience. Explosion of happiness in your mouth. Explosion of flavors. But this way too delicate. Carbonara is not a delicate dish. And then we start to make the sauce. Okay, so we're making the sauce as well, which means we have the sauce of the carbonara inside the carbonara. Now you have to make the sauce. So <clears throat> it could be tricky because we already have the carbonara mix sauce in the pasta. Now, how do we make the, the, the sauce? We can use cream. We can reuse eggs again in pecorino. Or maybe I would do a cacio e pepe sauce, like a delicate cacio e pepe sauce. So let's see what it's doing. Let's see. On olive oil and we roast a little bit the guanciale. Okay, that's the other thing. Yes, you can put olive oil. I live in Australia. The guanciale I get, it's fatty, but I always have to use olive oil, extra, ver extra virgin olive oil, to get more out of the, of the guanciale. So to, to get more fat in the, in the pan, okay? So the guanciale, when the fat melts, it will create the oil, okay? Not all the guanciale or pancetta react away, unfortunately. So a little bit of oil could do the job. And in this case, I think you do need the oil but the way I cut the guanciale, it doesn't release a lot, you know? Like if you cut guanciale into strips, or oh, lots of restaurants in Rome cut guanciale into cubes, like thick cubes, and when you eat carbonara, you feel like you're eating a steak. If you do that way, the fat will melt nicely and will create more oil. I don't like the way you cut it. We add the zucchini dices. Zucchini dices is a good idea. I mean, if you make vegetarian carbonara, it's great to use zucchini as a vegetarian option. We're making a carbonara. I know you're a Michelin star chef, you need to create. But what is the zucchini gonna do? Honestly, what is the zucchini doing right now? Please tell me, because I don't, I don't see the point of adding the zucchini in, in, in a beautiful carbonara dish you created. Instead, I would have cut the guanciale differently and I would have made a delicate cacio e pepe without the pepper, uh, like a cacio e pepe uh, sauce, which means pecorino, pasta water, mix it with the pasta you got, and you make it nice and creamy. Tools of white wine and a little bit. See, white wine is changing the recipe. It's not a carbonara anymore. Like you completely change everything, you know? I'm sure it tastes good, but... We add the cooked pasta and we are adding a little bit of the grated uh, pecorino cheese. See, that's what I mean. You can create the cacio pepe sauce. Um, I can, you can easily do that. Easily, easily. Simple. Try to do it. If you look at that, it is simple, uh, but I think you could have made it a little bit cheesier. And again, if you're eating carbonara, you want something heavy and rich. Yeah, nice. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. The cream came out. Okay, that's beautiful then. That means you don't need the zucchini. That means you don't need the wine. That means you just need the pecorino like you did. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Look at that beautiful carbonara mixture. And the egg cooked in the pasta water, all right? When, when the pasta boiled. So it, this is very safe to eat. I'm just looking at the guanciale and um, I see why it kind of does make it as more. Um, and I'm pretty sure this carbonara is very delicate. I just don't know if we can call this carbonara, if we can. I mean, it's his interpretation. I know, I get it. It's a beautiful dish, something I want to try. I want to try and make it myself and challenge his idea because I think we can make it work and we can still make it carbonara style, like following the methods of carbonara. 
beautiful. It's really nice. It's really nice. Again, remove the zucchini, remove the wine. It's a really beautiful creation. And I think the, the guanciale needs to be cut differently. Um, again, because I don't want the small guanciale. That probably melts in your mouth. You don't even know it's in your mouth. <laughs> but again, Michelin star chefs, they're not better. They work hard. This guy's great. I mean, his food is really good. Well known around the world for being amazing. He knows how to cook Italian food. So it's not a bad negative review. This is something I've learned something you've learned I um, just don't agree with what he used but that's his dish so we're nobody to tell him oh you know that's his creation at this restaurant in Rome but I think I can make it better what do you think? Huh? guys thank you so much for watching this uh, Michelin star carbonara reaction I hope you enjoyed I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video e ora si mangia a very interesting carbonara dish ciao